They say, oh, you know Africans. They run on African time. But we ask, do they really know Africans? And yes, we're always on African time. African time means we are quick to find solutions for us, created by us. We innovate for African time and look to ourselves to shape the future of Africa. We've been on the move. African time didn't just start today. It's who we are and what we do. It's what our ancestors lived. It's what we've inherited. To do things on African time is to do them innovatively. Because there's no better time to be an African business hero than right now. It's time for Africa. It's African time. <laughs> Welcome everyone, Hujambo, Salam Aleikum, Bonjour, Salam, Akam, Ibolachi, Sani Bonani, Muhoro, Ola, from wherever you are in your beautiful continent of Africa. Welcome to the very first ABH Scale Up event. I am going to be your host for the next hour and a half. My name is Tony Ndumo, I'm in the beautiful land of Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm looking forward to getting you through what we're talking about today. It's so nice to see so many of you. We are currently just around 100 people. I'm seeing everyone from every part of the continent. Put your, put your names and details on, on our chat. I see Michael Onaja from Nigeria. I see you there. Uh, Yu Hang is, is here from Hong Kong as well. I'm seeing so many cool people. We've got Ghana represented. We've got Morocco in the house. We have Uganda, Tanzania. Zimbabwe, now both, I see you there as well. And we've got people in English and in French. So I'm very grateful to Guy and Constance who are going to be doing our translation. You can always check into that if you're French speaking, if English speaking, I will be your host this morning or afternoon, depending on where you're in the world. Anshu, I see you and all of you who are looking for conversation with our beautiful guests today, Violet and Mulaye, you will definitely be able to find them, but welcome. Welcome to the very first Africa Business Heroes Scale Up event. And, and this year is the third year that ABH Prize has done its journey. You may be keeping tabs on that. At the end of this session, we will tell you about how you can get into the next dream team, which is starting very, very shortly. In the past three years, ABH has witnessed such a big growth of diversity in the African entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial space. We all know how we have done a lot in FinTech, we've done a lot in EdTech, Agritech, Skincare. We're even getting into a much bigger space now. You might have seen Flutterwave just raised $250 million at a $3 billion, $3 billion valuation. is easily the most valuable uh, tech startup we've had out of the continent in years. Uh, in the FinTech space, they're doing a phenomenal job. And your stories, you are the people who are inspiring these changes around the world. The mindset around being African has totally changed and it's because of you and you and you. And we wanna make sure at ABH that we usher in a new conversation around what Africa can really be. And that's the reason, one of the main reasons why the ABH logo has also changed. It's moved from being what it was, which was a very circular uh, um, a type of arbitrary logo to a more focused standard logo. And this brand has a strong structure in its H. It's showing connection and connectivity. And we're trying to make sure that everybody here can be able to do that with us. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this in the ABH team. You're going to be seeing a truly Pan-African brand. We're going to be dealing with African entrepreneurs. It's going to be by African entrepreneurs, for African entrepreneurs, with African entrepreneurs. So it's not an accelerator from people from abroad. It's going to be us teaching us and showing us. It's going to be very inclusive. We're very pro-women. We're very pro-men of every race, color, shade, wherever you are from, faith, religion. We don't care about that. We just want you to come because everybody has, has an answer to a problem. It's sector agnostic. So whichever space you come from, we're super happy to have you on board and it's grassroots oriented. We want you to solve your problem for your people. And if it can do something for your people, it might be able to do something for my people. So the mission of the ABH project is to strengthen the African entrepreneurship ecosystem, ecosystem by identifying, telling the stories of and training and awarding grant funding to as many, if more than a hundred African founders possible, yes, but as many as a hundred business heroes across Africa over the next 10 years. The amount of money that ABH is gonna put behind us is a lot. I'm personally a founder of two companies based out of Kenya, one in EdTech and one in FinTech. And they reached out to me saying, we want one of the entrepreneurs to host the show. So I'm honored to be able to be here with a lot of my peers, including you, uh, and, and just be able to do this together with you. So I'm, I'm super excited to do this to start. Please remember to put your emails in so that we can be able to really connect with each other. Uh, I definitely would love to have a list of as many of you as possible for me. So when I'm coming out to Ghana, when I'm going to Namibia, when I'm down in Zimbabwe, when I'm going up to Morocco, I have somebody I can be able to call on and be like, yo, 
Tony from Kenya is coming to your town. Do you mind if I come and crash with you and just get to know what you do? But also when you're coming into my town in Kenya, all you need to do is give me a call and I'll take care of you. That's how we Africans do it. So super happy to have all of you up uh, for the Africa business scale up the first one. You guys are all the first ones. And we're gonna get right into it. And what I wanna do is, is start off by, by getting us into a game, right? So we're gonna play a little game. I want to know how much of uh, the ABH team you know, how much of the ABH story you know. My boy, Michael, is gonna put up something that I would like us to do. I'd like you to open your browser. So take your phone. I hope all of us have a little phone. So I'm gonna take your phone and go to, I think, my, yeah, there it is, there it is, there it is. And open your browser on your phone. I'd like you to go to kahoot.it, kahoot.it. Go to Kahoot, I'm already on it, kahoot.it. And the input pin you've got there, I hope you're on it. I'm gonna see, honestly, your name is 867. You can see it on my screen, 8673057. So the game pin is 8673057. I know some of you like the numbers in two, some of you like them in threes. 8673057. And then just for prizes, because it's gonna be money be given out. Yeah. So we're gonna be we're gonna be giving everyone who wins, the top five who win and a gift. So you 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 have to be focused now. Yeah. We're gonna give coupons at the end of the game to the top five winners. So get ready. So I want you to put your full name. So just you if I'm gonna put mine, you're gonna see me there. Put your full name so we know where you're from, and then put your country. The you can put just the tag, you can write your whole country, Kenya, or you can put the just the letters that symbolize your country, KE. And then when you do that, we'll be able to see you on, on the website. So I'm already up on the website. I'm looking for some of you. Some of you guys are fast. I see you. Michael, you're going to be sharing that, that screen for us. I'm hoping that as many of you are as on at Kahoot as possible. Make sure you see your nickname on the screen. Kahoot is spelled K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. And the pin number has been shared as well, 8673057. I see so many good people in there. Terence from Uganda is there, Andrew from Kenya is there. I see uh, Matilda from Zim, Mansa. Mansa, you haven't put where you're from. Sam from Ghana is there, I like that. Miss Fix It, I don't know where Miss Fix It is from, but definitely put your name in there. Dominic Naboth from, is also in there. From Zim, Lois, I see you. Uno from SA, I see you as well, New. Ogaga, you haven't put your country names, put your country names. We definitely want to find you out. Ruta is there, D46. Let's put a name and a country if that's possible so we can be able to give you uh, your rewards if you get into it. We are about to start. I like this. This is so good. Kahoot.it is the website and the game pin is 8673057. Oh, this is a good number of people. I know you can see yourselves on Michael's screen. Let's give two more minutes to see if you can be able to get up to 50 people of the 100 on the game. Aziz Jalili from Nigeria, we're waiting for you. I can't see you on the screen. Shaban from Uganda, I know you're in there somewhere. I think I've seen you. Yacham from Nigeria, I'm also looking for you on the group. Akinlolo, I see you there from Nigeria. I see Willem from South Africa, Dean from Ghana, Glenn from Glenn. Oh, this is nice. This is going really well. Shout out to Unotida from SA. He's put his email address in the chat. He's from Cape Town, South Africa. And they help entrepreneurs improve their cash flows and build financially sustainable businesses. Definitely drop some of those texts. I'll be reading them as we go. 
But at 59 people, I believe we can start our game. This is very quick. Okay, remember, to win Kahoot, you need to do two things. Be quick and be right. That's the point. So here we go. Two, one, I'm also ready. Let's go. Which one of the following is not one of the ABH application eligibility criteria? Which one is not? Tell me. Company primarily operates in Africa. The company primarily operates in Africa. Read it. Read it really well. Mm -hmm. Four, three, two, one. This is a cheat because there are two answers that are the same. So, I mean, seriously, 40 people got it. Tahira is the first, Andy H is second, Matilda from Zim is third. Nkovile from Zimbabwe is fourth, and Muna from Kenya is fifth. I can see that. This is nice. I like it. Okay, that's the first one. We got the next one. Which one of the following is not a benefit of applying for ABH? Which is not a benefit? Which is not a benefit? Which is not a benefit? Let me see. 15 answers, 19 answers, 26 answers, 27, seven seconds left, 35 answers, five seconds left, 48 answers, three, two, one let's see what's going on here who's winning okay that's good 33 of you got it right tahira has been kicked off the top it's andy h and Nkovila from zimbabwe is there Diko from tanzania has just come into the mix i am number you you need to beat me i'm number four i'm number four and then enam is there please put your country so we know where you're from well done okay we keep going we've got three more questions let's do it try to beat me i mean i'm, I'm how am i beating all of you and i've never seen these questions before which month will the abh call for application starting. Which month does the 2022 ABH call for applications start? Come on, people. Show me you know. 39 answers, eight seconds to go. 54, five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Am I still winning? Am I still winning? Let's see, am I still winning? It was March. It is this month of March. And the H was number one. Is he still at the top? He is or she is. Maria Namuya is there, Andrew too. I'm still number people. I'm number four. Why am I number four? MP from Zim is there. Try and kick us. Let's see who's winning. We've got one more to go. One more question to go. No, this is number four. How many industries does the 2020 top 10 heroes operate in? How many industries does the top, does the 2021 top heroes, uh, top 10 heroes operate in? How many industries? Give me a number. I don't know. I've just guessed. 43, seven seconds to go. 51, five seconds to go. Just give it an answer. Try your best. Come on, let's go. One second. Who's got it? It's <laughs> it's nine. I guess nine. I'm number one. <laughs> Aaron K, Andy H, Maria Namuye, Andrew Karua is is from Kenya. Is, is that's the top ten, That's the top five right now. We have one more question. One more. I'll even tell you one more question. I'm not gonna answer it because I don't want to beat all of you. How many countries did 2021's ABH pool of applicants? come from how many countries i'll be the last to answer the question i'll be the very last i want to know how many countries did the 2021 abh pool of africans come from you have to know you have to know come on people look i'm about to answer two seconds now i'm answering okay i said nine which is wrong 25 is right who's gonna kick me off the top aaron k is at the front andrew Karua has now moved from fourth no from fifth to second miss fix it ug has coming through. I have dropped to third. Michael from Kenya is over there. It's like a marathon. Kenyans are winning. Why is this? This is not right. People, focus. Now, do not close this browser. We're going to come back and do the last five. And the last five questions, whoever wins is going to get uh, coupons to be able to get some of the amazing products we have online. So don't close the browser on your device. Don't close it. Just change it if you're using a mobile phone to get into this Zoom call. Don't put off your browser. We'll be right back to finish the last five questions. Well done, though. Good, big shout out to all the people who have participated. Well done. Okay, now we've done that and we really want to get into the heart of it because it's it's super important for us to talk to amazing people who have done amazing things. And, and there's, there's a story that I want us to, to dive into. But before we do that, I'm gonna ask my colleague Yuhan to play a video about this amazing moment that we're gonna be talking to shortly. I know V, you're ready. I can see you looking amazing. I can't wait to talk to you in a few minutes, but Yuhan, Let's play a video and then let's get into it. Um, Bye.
welcome to the finale of Africa's Business Heroes 2021. It is African time. We see entrepreneurs that continue to come to this competition with so much passion. To build businesses that will help to shape and change Africa's future. Just go and change the world and make it better. More people gaining access to clean drinking water. Proved cookstoves using recycled metal. My name is Violet and I eat my skincare. I love to try some of the skincare products just to taste it. I like your courage. Seems like your model could be competing with some of the free platforms. And each time like a phoenix, you grow to greater and greater heights. In my view, probably you want to rethink that organizational chart. If you could help me understand, how does your business make money? African creatives never get the value for the work that they do. First, from 10 absorbing pitches, only three heroes remain. Who will win? We have solved Africa's rock-cracking problem. And one of the most challenging aspects in STEM education is lab work. Enda is proudly Kenya's and Africa's first performance running footwear brand. Do your shoes come in a 42 and a half? Because I'm a 42 and a half. <laughs> Khadija, we have your daughter here. Farida, you've got 10 seconds to cheer your mom on. Mom, go, mommy, go, Fred. Yeah. Shall I just go ahead and just mention who, who, who's winning? That would be awesome. <laughs> Hang on, Ikena, I want some palm nut. Where can I get some palm, some of the palm <laughs> Kenna, Navalayo. Khadija, congratulations to you, Navalayo, for being in the third position. And I'm super grateful for this moment. I'll never experience it again in my life, and I'm taking it all in. Ikena and Khadija want to know exactly how tonight ends. Congratulations to you, Ikena, see your relief. This is an exceptional moment. I'm so proud to have gotten second after such a long and arduous competition. I would like to announce uh, the first place winner, Khadija of Bed Week. We've been working so hard to get here and I'm so thankful for the judges and for Africa Business Heroes for giving me this opportunity. Africa will rise. Africa will rise. The real value is as we change the story of the continent, as we create the value that is needed in order to feed, to educate, to empower, and to build the right solutions for a continent of so many people. Oh, wow. Isn't that the most amazing video? That was... It fills my, my heart with joy to see what we are able to do and what we've done for ourselves. And one of the people who has, has really been an inspiration to that is here with us. And ladies and gentlemen, Violet, just, just <laughs> give her a hand as, as she comes in, whatever you are. I know you're going to hear it. I, I have a chair Hi, sound. Hi, everyone. How are you? Violet, it's so good to see you, love. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you, Tony. And you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. This is for you. This is specifically for you uh, because we're just so proud of what you've done and how you've been able to do it. We wanted to have you over and just see how skincare you can eat. I mean, that's <laughs> that's really impressive. How did that, just that whole story. So first, take us on to your a journey of your presentation. Tell us who you are, what you've done, how it's working. And then I can't okay. wait to have a Q&A with you and just chat about the amazing products you've created. Violet, the table is yours. Okay, awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and then, okay. Okay, can you can you see my screen? Hello? Yes. We can, yes, you yes, can yes, see no, my screen. Yes. Okay, all right, awesome. <laughs> okay, so everyone, welcome to the ABH with Skin Gourmet, um, Scala. Um, we're gonna be talking about building a globally recognized brand and, and, and distribution channel. Let me know if I'm talking too fast so I can slow down because I tend to talk quite quickly. So again, my name is Violet and yes, I do eat my skincare. And I'm the founder and the CEO of Skin Gourmet. And as Tony said, I am a African business hero top 10 finalist. Okay, so. First and foremost, what is Skin Gourmet, right? Skin Gourmet is raw handmade skincare and sourced in the wilds of Ghana. 
and it's so pure that you can literally eat it. We usually go by the words raw, pure, wild, which is basically what explains what the brand is. Raw meaning that it's as close to nature as possible. Um, it's 100 pure in the sense that seven ingredients or less, and the ingredients are 100% pure. That means unadulterated. And then wild because it's sourced from Ghana. Okay, so edible skincare that tastes good. So not only are we saying that it's our skincare is edible, it's not just like a marketing ploy to a skincare that's edible. It's actually, you can choose to eat it or you can choose to wear it, which gives the customer the choice in terms of um, versatility. All right. Now I started Skin Gourmet with $45, which is, I think at that time was 145 Ghana cities in 2014. And it started because I had a split lip and I was trying to solve or heal myself and then found out that, wow, we have these resources in Ghana and I'm comparing it to creams I was using to heal myself before, looking at the ingredients and I'm like, wait, something's wrong here. Why do I have so many different ingredients in here? And then this is one ingredient and it works. So I started looking at the ingredients, like what exactly is in it? And I was like, wait a minute. Most of the stuff is preservatives, emulsifiers, things that are not going to really help heal me, but would rather sell the product. Now, when I started, I started with $45, but from then till now, I've been able to put in my own personal investment of about $60,000, which means I am all in. <laughs> in other words, this, is, this business is so important to me that I, I've sacrificed a lot for it. And that's extremely important because it drives you to succeed. But at the same time, too, you have to watch what your motive is. Why is it that you are all in or ready to do what it is that you want to do? Why you have to be all in is extremely, 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 extremely important um, because you have to set your mind on an aim. You have to decide and you're willing to change to suit your environment in order to win. It's constant adaptation because you cannot afford to lose. And the reason why you cannot afford to lose is not, it's not just because of what you put in, it's because of why you're putting it in. I, I'm going to explain that better. So have an aim that is not about you. What I mean by that is if, you, if what you're doing in business is all about you, you're not going to be able to push forward or the passion is not going to, it's not going to be enough for you to keep going because it's going to be very, very difficult. Also, we have to also remember that we are Africans, right? So as Africans, globally, they don't trust us with transactions. And <laughs> that's just the fact of the matter. If you look at uh, our past with things like people being defrauded, being scammed, Nigeria 419, all that stuff. So it's very difficult to transact in the global world if your aim is that you're there to make money for yourself because they'll be onto you so quickly, you would not even, like, they'll be onto you faster than you can say Jack. But if your aim is right, your motives will be right and it will also show. And, and, also, and also saying that it's not about you, we all wanna talk about impact and doing business. But as an African, when we're doing business for even the world to connect with us, they find joy in helping us succeed, right? Because it's been for so long where Africans are always oh, Africa is the, you know, but it's, it's when an African is doing it and the, your motive and your aim is right and it's sincere and people can see that, people are willing to help you. Uh, so then you have to also set your vision. What, what's, what exactly do you want to do, right? If you're not, building a global brand, then that's not your vision. So don't focus on that. But if your vision is that that's what you want to do, then you have to set up everything to make sure that it is indeed a global brand. Now, case in point, going back to the points about Africa, just in case someone wants to fight with me. PayPal doesn't work in Africa. And there's a reason why. It's because that whole trust factor is not there. So when it comes to um, global business with Africans, the one of the most important things is trust. And you can only get that trust if you have the right aim which is not about you making money, but it's actually about other people. All right. Now, again, <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is because people are not stupid, okay? In other words, you, you, if your aim or your motive is not right, people will be onto you. So a lot of the times you find that people like to do marketing. Again, marketing. You cannot market to your market, right? People will connect to what they believe in or what they feel is sincere or, in other words, what I'm trying to say is don't market, like just tell your story, just be authentically you and just find a way to communicate clearly what it is that you are and why you are. I mean, listen, if you are there to make money, just say you're there to make money. I mean, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that we shouldn't cover up our motives with marketing. 
just tell your story as you really are authentically and people will want to connect to you on their own. I have this adage, it's called 99 days, right? 99 days for the thief, <laughs> one day for the master. Eventually, eventually, if you're not sincere, authentic, or you're not being truthful, it will definitely come out. And that would be the worst thing because you cannot reclaim your reputation. Once your reputation is damaged, that's it. You can pack your bags and you can go home. Um, so the customer is a master, of course. And then we, I'm not going to call us these, but I'm just saying, in terms of adage, <laughs> the customer is the master. Um, so what, what, the other point I was going to make is, um, another thing that's important when you're telling your story is the vibe that you create, right? So in building a brand, it's not just something on paper, like a logo. No, it's an actual identity. It's a characteristic, right? So when you're communicating online, you have to show that characteristic of your brand authentically and how it is that you communicate. Now, this can be quite difficult because it takes time to build this. Um, for example, with me, I have a brand guide. I've been writing my brand guide for seven years now. My brand guide is about 100, it's almost, I think, no, I think I'm at 200 pages now. And it's something that is constantly evolving and constantly changing because as you're building the business and telling that story, you're always adding, of course, because you are growing. But it's important to have a brand guide because your story has to be consistent, right? You can't be one way today and another way tomorrow, just moving with the flow. You have to think of your organization or your brand as almost a person. So something that people can relate to, it's quite consistent, they know what to expect, and it easily communicates. It has to also be relatable and identifiable to your market. Now, that also means you need to also identify your market, right? So you need to know who you're talking to so that you can understand how to tell your story so that they understand. And it's very important that you identify this market because that's where you focus, right? These are the people that you are loyal to. That's your that's where you get your brand loyal. This, this is your basically your crew. You create your vibe to attract your tribe. It's essentially what it is that I'm saying. And then also the important thing is whatever story you're telling, you actually have to be that. I think I said that before, but I'm, I'm just gonna turn it in. You actually have to be the story that you're telling. In other words, you have to be the message. And how you are the message is number one, it's gonna be in your teamwork, right? So if you're gonna build a global brand, you cannot do it by yourself. There's just no way, it's not about you. You cannot put together all the pieces on your own. A strong, competent team is what you need to build a proper globally recognized brand and distribution systems. Because at the end of the day, it's systems. Systems, things that work together to improve whatever it is that you're doing. But it's tricky because you are not gonna live forever. Right, so you have to build a system that does not need you and a system that continuously adapts even though you are not there. So that's one of the things that you really have to concentrate on. That's why it's important to have a team because if something happens and you're not here today, that's why I think a lot of times with um, African companies, I'm not, not majority of African companies, they don't last past the founder. And that's because we're not putting a great insistence on systems. Systems are the most important things because they will regulate you, right? They will make sure that whatever your plan is or your aim is, it goes and flows in a way that is logical, is easy, is transparent. Other people can also follow it. And it's something that when you're not here, will continue to evolve and continue to grow so that your business will stay global, even though you're no more. <laughs> I know it sounds very dismal, right? Um, okay, so the other thing you need is your corporate culture. So not only do you need a team, it's not like, oh, you just hire Mary and Jacob and Kuju and Ama, and you just come together and you sit down and that's it. No, everybody's bringing in a bit of a personality, which is why it's extremely important that you have a brand guy because you need to shape your culture. So it's a very intentional thing. Um, for example, if you want to have a culture that's very strict, very militant, that's fine. But then you as a leader has to exude that. And people who come in with different cultures have to learn your culture. So that's why it's again, extremely important that you have a brand guy. Because from that, for example, somebody from Finland calls you or emails you, how you respond all the time has to, it goes to add to what I'm saying in the sense that it has a personality. No matter where you are talking, which, which person you're talking to in the organization, it still feels like it's skin warming. That's why it's extremely important to have a culture. Now, most people ask, what exactly is a culture? It's when people share 
um, beliefs and behaviors that determine exactly how the company's employees and their management interact and handle outside business transactions. And it's extremely important because if you have a good, strong company culture, you attract and retain better talent. People will feel invested in the company because it's like a family, right? So it's how the company fares is important because it's not just about the numbers or the figures, but if Skin Gourmet doesn't do well, my colleagues will also not do well. And that's important because we have a culture. So a culture is extremely, 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 extremely important. All right. Um, next is help people win. You have to empathize, empathize, empathize. You have to empathize with your, you have to empathize with your customer. You have to ensure that they do not lose. This is extremely important. You must ensure your customer never loses. I'll give you an example. So when we were first moving into the UK, um, I had this uh, young intern take over our stock to the distributor. And <laughs> it got there, it was completely, everything was destroyed. I mean, we lost, I think, 5,000 pounds in that one transaction. I was furious. I mean, but I had to pause for a second because the two people that were involved is, okay, the three people is me, um, the distributor, and then, of course, um, the intern. Now, the intern and distributor are both my stakeholders. So I can decide I'm going to get really angry and be upset about, or you got to take a step back, breathe. And ask yourself, first of all, was Violet, that was probably your fault. You did not package this thing well. And find a way to, number one, reimburse the distributor without any cost to them because it wasn't their fault. And then with the intern, just have a good talk with them. Interestingly enough, UK is, one of our, is a very good market for us because we have that good relationship because the distributor can trust us that even if something happens, even if the, it was done wrongly, they're not penalized for it. They don't, they don't, they don't, there's no fault with them. So they're willing to take another chance on us, even though we made a mistake because we were accountable for our mistakes. And then the intern who I took my time on, she is now one of our biggest partners in Skin Gourmet. We've actually started a new company with her because of patience. Now, another example I have is when we went to the USA, when we went to the US, like, let, me say, let me tell you guys, let me tell you, if you're going global, just know you are going to lose sometimes. It's just a fact, it's just a fact, but you have to be willing to lose. So we went into the USA, Start a new, a whole new um, ent uh, entity. And then we had a falling out with our partner. And what our partner did was they took all these orders, about $4,000 worth or even more, and then shut us out of the shop. So you couldn't, you couldn't see where, number one, you couldn't access the money the customer had paid. And number two, you couldn't even tell where the orders were going. So what did we focus on? We focused on, okay, you know what? let's stop everything. Let's find a way to get the customers their products or give them a refund. Because what has happened between our part, our, 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 us and our distributor has nothing to do with the client. And if, if you're now going to make excuses, oh, it's because and then my partner, nobody cares. Nobody cares. The, as, long as, the, as far as the customer is concerned, it's cool African country I'm trying to help, cool African brand trying to help. All of a sudden I pay and then there's all these excuses, you know what they're going to think. So what you have to do is, what do we do? Refunded them or made sure they got their products for free. It didn't matter how much money we had to lose, it was more important that we defended our reputation. The other one that I was gonna talk about in terms of sacrifice and empathizing with customers, it's also like, for example, when we went into Japan, Japan is really interesting because their standards are so high, right? <laughs> so high. So you are a bit intimidated because you don't think you can meet that standard. But what we did was we did it to the best of our ability. If there was something wrong, we just made sure that we placed it or we corrected it until they realized that, okay, until we got to the level they needed us to be at. But that's the thing. You, are, you have to be willing to do whatever you need to do to make sure that the customer has more value than it costs them. It's extremely important. Otherwise, they're not going to want to transact with you. The same way that in business we say the inputs you put in should be less than the output you get. It's actually the same way the customer is thinking as well. So we always have to keep that in mind. Now, again, I'm going to say to you that because we are Africans, because we are Africans and we know our past, okay, it's just a fact, you have to go a little bit harder into making sure that your customer trusts you because we already have that stain because of our past trans transgressions. Yeah, transgressions. Okay, all right. So now, relationships and partners. This is so essential. It is not funny. 
um, you cannot survive without your relationships and your partners. And I mean that throughout your full value chain. So that's from when you source to when your customer gets it, to your distributor, to even your own employees, to your bankers. Like it, it's the people and the partnerships and the relationships that make it work. Now, for example, you have to invest in them winning, right? If you, in order to, for example, to secure your supply chain, which is extremely important when you're dealing with raw materials or services or whatever, you have to secure your supply chain. Now, as a small company coming up, Skin Gourmet, we don't have money like the huge companies that can go and basically also talk to our, our partners. So what we did was we invested in our partners. So that basically means we're going to get organic certification. Now, Skin Gourmet can decide they're going to get it by themselves or we can pay for it for our partners. That way, they see us as a priority. So you invest in other people, and that's how you get their loyalty. But also, you have to also have understanding and compromise, right? And that's important because people make mistakes. The same way when we export our things, people may have issues with it, and we take a hit. We also have to take a hit sometimes when people have disappointed us to compromise because then you can get a better understanding and they'll understand how to improve. But if you keep just giving up on people quickly, you're going to end up having a supply chain that's unstable. You are going to have people that don't trust you and it's all about money. But to make something stable, you need loyalty, you need trust. And that means that you have to take a hit and you have to make them a priority. You have to sacrifice some of what you're getting to make sure that they're getting it in order that they will also sacrifice for you if a better opportunity comes along. Um, payment terms are extremely important for this as well. Like when you have a good relationship with say your supplier or your customer, things like money and how it's paid, it's almost becomes like you can understand each other more. So you end up getting better payment terms a lot of the times. So you're able to stretch more with less. Now, the same thing applies to customers as well, but I'll get back to that one because it's a little bit tricky, but that's why we're dealing with things like, um, we're dealing with things like currency exchanges. So it's a bit different there, but you still have to be understanding and quite um, unconventional in how you do your payment terms. Like for example, this sounds crazy, but if you trust your customer, you can actually give them consignment, right? Most people stay away from consignment, from, um, from um, payments, which is on consignment because you want your money almost upfront to work with it. But at the same time, how do you expect somebody to take a risk on your products if you're not taking a risk by trusting them too. So it sounds very strange. A lot of people like ask us how we're able to forge these relationships, these partners with these distributors is because sometimes you take a hit and you just trust people. It doesn't always work out, but a lot of the times it does. And people also trust you as well. Now, it's also important that even though you're making it sweet for your partners, the deal is sweet. You need to also know when to walk away. What I mean by that is, Relationships and partnerships is not just with anyone. They have to be aligned with your values. They have to have the same values that you have. For example, I remember we, were, we, went, we moved into Netherlands um, with a new distributor and the relationship was just rocky, right? I mean, you could tell there was no, there was no trust. It was very, you know, you, you could, it was more about profits and, not, and then trying to change the brand guide and, I mean, yes, there's money coming in, but at the same time, this is the brand. You have to protect your culture. You have to, um, don't, ch don't change your brand just because of money. Um, you have to stick to your brand guy because that's basically the identity that your customers are also relating with. It's kind of weird if you change it like, on them like that. And if you don't get the, if you don't, if, you don't, if you're not feeling their vibe, get off the ride. I mean, just leave. It's, it's the best thing to do as opposed to then trying to compromise who you are. So you compromise on things like your transactions or in understanding, but you're not compromising on what your brand is because it has to be stable and consistent. <clears throat> okay, so next, I'm, gonna, I'm really gonna hit on this point, that you have to be willing to lose. You have to get, you have to have the mentality when you go into every single transaction, especially internationally that you may lose. You may lose because remember that these are people that are far away. Um, and there's a lot of things that can happen from here to there. One of the major things is shipping and you know, our stuff is in glass. So you have to 
be willing to lose in order to learn how to do it better in the future. So don't be afraid that you're going to lose so you just don't do it at all. Do it and lose. And then when you lose, you learn how to bounce back from that and then to also improve. So it's ex extremely important to be willing to lose because and when you lose, it's when you can refine or tweak the system so you can understand a bit better. I mean, for example, you just someone says, okay, ship 5,000 units to Canada. You've never done to Canada before. You have not, you just have to go with what you have, but be okay with the fact that you might not win all the way, but it's just the beginning of something. Now, I want to give you an example of when I say you're willing to lose. So we had to do a rebranding really quickly because um, we had to change our logo. Uh, we just finished an accelerator, we changed the logo, and we had printed all these different labels. Like, but at the same time, too, we have to rebrand. Right. And, you know, as Africans, oh yeah, let, let, let all the labels finish. Let's just finish use all the labels before we rebrand. That would have taken forever. So what we decided to do is to be more creative. We took the old labels and we used them as wallpaper so we could recycle. And then we invested in the new labels and that allowed us to rebrand. So don't be so afraid of of taking a risk and always afraid that um, you're going to lose. And by losing your business is going to collapse. It's not going to collapse as long as <laughs> as long as you're willing to grow and learn from it and mitigate the risk. Uh -huh. Then another thing that's extremely important is ah here we go thank you another thing that's extremely important is to be grateful for the discomfort. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You should be happy for your suffering. It sounds extremely strange, but it is when you're uncomfortable that you know that you're growing. So if you are not sure about something, um, you're not sure about a person, you've not done this before, you don't know how to do the contract, you're not sure about how to communicate, it's uncomfortable, that's good. Because it's in, when you're uncomfortable that you realize that you're learning something new and taking on basically the world. Because when you're going global, everything is uncomfortable. Everything. I mean, <laughs> you have currency flux fluctuating, you have different cultures you're dealing with, you, you're dealing with staff. You're, it's, you, it's uncomfortable, you're continuously growing, but you have to be grateful for it because that's how you know that you are growing. And you have to also keep your eye out, right? You have to keep your eye out at all times that when you are getting comfortable, you should find something that disrupts it. Because usually when you're getting comfortable, it also means that you're starting to stagnate in your growth. The next point is to differentiate and innovate. I think the saying is cut your cloth according to your size. No, cut your cloth according to your cloth. That means use what you have, where you have and make the most out of it. So at Skin Gourmet, the reason why we focus on Ghana so hard is because Ghana is a very small country with I think it says we're about, I wanna say 29 million, no, 32 million, right? 32 million people. And then we have a global world of, I think it's 10 billion or so, 10 billion people, roughly, I'm just guessing, but rough, roughly. So what Ghana has is extremely different than what the rest of the world has. So when I say innovate and be different, take what you have that other people don't have and repackage it in a way that they would want it outside. So you wanna do global business, but for example, you're selling say wasabi, right? But you're not in Japan. You're selling wasabi from Ghana. It's not really your, your, your forte, unless you're like Japanese Guinean. But if you focus on what you have, what you understand, what you, your resources you have now, and then you change it, repackage it, add value, and then you take it out to the world so you can share it, that gives you a much, much bigger market. However, if you are copying, it's like a piece of pie. And one person, the innovative one, is taking, people have taken a piece of pie. So it's not the piece of pie now left, the pie is small now. But when you innovate, you get a fresh, big, fat slice of that pie first because it's your idea, because it's your story. So what, whatever you do, you have to maximize your limited resources, add innovation to it, repackage it, and then send it out. Now, interesting thing about sending it out though is you have to constantly adapt, right? Because again, people are different. So once you have your product or your service, you have to always think about market adaptability. How do I adapt my brand? Not my, how do I adapt my brand? How do I adapt my, my products to this particular country? When I say adapt the brand, I mean flexibly, not when changing completely, right? How do I tweak it to fit this particular market? 
For example, if you're going into a French speaking country, most of the time you will have to change your labels to have French language on it because people will not understand what is on the label, but they love it. They have an idea of it. They like the branding, but they still don't know what it is. So sometimes you may have to do that, but that's not necessarily all the time. But this is just an example of how you have to adapt. Now, when I say um, geographically, case in point, if you're exporting coconut oil, in Ghana, it's liquid. In the States, it's solid. So again, you have to, so the product in itself even changes depending where it is geographically. So you always have to adapt it to where it is that it's going. And when I say systemically, systemically means you have to watch regulations, you have to watch certifications, you have to watch taxes, you have to, you have to watch the spending habits even of the people based on these different laws, taxes, um, um, regulations to understand even your pricing points. So it's extremely important that you adapt to the market. Now, don't, don't do this thing where you scare yourself and you overly over go and analyze the market. No, sometimes just put your foot in, lose, and then get the feedback and you know how to adapt. But if you wanna, if it's, it's very difficult to study something and know how your particular personal product is going to adapt to a market when you have not put it in there. Because just because somebody else has done it and they're telling you about it, it's not the same as when you actually just put your foot in the hot water and you understand, okay, they didn't like this, they didn't like that, they didn't like this, they didn't like this, I have to tweak this and that. You get good feedback and get bad feedback. Focus on the bad feedback and also focus on the good feedback. But it's important that you focus on the feedback that's coming back and adapt it as per how your target market operates. If you just lose Violet, Violet will lose you. Oh, I think we lost Violet. And she was right in the middle of a great conversation about adapting. This is like university for you, by the way. If you don't have notes and a book, I don't even know what to tell you. Like she has come up. I'm on page six now of the things she said. You are, I'm let's see if you can try and get a back, but oh my gosh. She has really taken us to school. I have done accelerators. I have been part of both Stanford and Harvard programs that were short-term programs for content creation, and I've never seen anything this good. So I really do hope you are, you are learning something from all of this and it's adding value to you. Um, so what we're gonna do is, as we wait for Violet to come back though, because she's gonna be back and when she's back, we're definitely gonna celebrate her. I have seen all your questions. The presentation, Israel, yes, awesome. Osborne, I see you on page eight. Uh, Andre, I see you there from DRC. No, from Congo, Brazzaville, Congo. I'm not sure which one. Lucy, I see you all. We have your questions. We had every intention of getting her to answer your questions. Probably her internet has failed. Uh, another trend that is in Africa that you need to discuss, and she was probably going to talk about it in a bit. But my goodness, I really hope you've been making those notes because she has killed it in a way that I cannot, I mean, I cannot explain to you how these things are so specific to Africa. You can't learn them anywhere else. You can't learn them in the UK, you can't learn them in the States, you can't learn them in, in Asia, you have to learn them here. And if you don't understand some of the things she's telling you, then you're really gonna struggle to move forward. Now, I want us to get us into the next section of the game as we wait for her to get back. Um, but we, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, you remember that we had started, I know it's our minds are in a different space. So I wanna bring us down. I wanna calm us down a little bit. I really wanted her to finish. She wasn't able to finish, but but we're gonna figure out how to make this up to you so that we can we can get this story going. I'm, I'm looking at all my screens because my team is telling us that we, we need to jump into, into the next thing. So let me jump into the game again. Then when we jump into the game now, when she comes back, we'll see if either we can finish it off or go into our next superstar, Mulaye, who's here from Anchor, who I've been reading up on and he's very interesting as well. He's the same caliber, but we're gonna make something happen at some point. So look, do you remember we talked about the screen? I hope you never closed yours. I didn't close mine. My connection is still up. So why don't we jump into that and, and just make that happen. So go back to your screen uh, and your screen was the, the, the you all remember, this is how my screen looks like. I hope yours looks something like that. Go back to your mobile phone screen where we were playing on Kahoot. If you, uh, if you do not remember the Kahoot details, I can give that to you shortly. Kahoot details were Log into kahoot.it, uh, or so it's kahoot, K A H O O T dot I T. The pin number is 
3057. Get that going. And, and then let's continue with the game. But yes, I can I can see all of you loving what we did. Um, oh, a violet, my gosh. Skin gome, amazing, amazing. Especially now, especially now when we're starting to learn all the chemicals that are in drugs uh, that we take or that are in products that we put on our skin, especially now with, with dark skin being beautiful. Remember the time we used to be sold uh, on, on uh, skin lighteners? Do you remember that? I'm sure everyone remembers that where there was mercury in the products and our skin was burning. Do you remember that? She's changing the game. We know how to solve our own problems. So that's, that's something that she's really doing. All right, we're going to jump into the game. So the game pin is 867-3057. You remember that? Kahoot.it. I'm going to ask my people to put us up again. You can remember. You saw how it was. Aaron K, who we don't know where he's from, was number one. Andrew from Kenya is number two. Miss Fixit from Uganda is number three. I am number four, so you're trying to kick me off the platform. And I never answered the fourth question. I just left it. And Michael from Kenya is, is number five. So we need to pull out these East Africans. Where are my Nigerian people, Congolese people, Zimbabwe people, Ghana people, Morocco people? Where are you? I'm seeing you on the chat. I'm seeing you. you know, big shout out to all our French speaking brothers and sisters, by the way. It's so nice to see all of you. Bonjour. Uh, Ariane from DRC is here. Uh, there's just so many. Hassan, nice to see you. Hassan Musa. Um, Osborne is here as well. Andre Mwanza is here as well from Congo. I see so many of you. God's Glory is from here from Nigeria as well. Very nice to have you here. Israel Fuga is here as well. I'm really feeling the vibe too. So uh, if we're all in and we're ready, let us begin. Yuhan, shall we go? Question number six, which one is not Skin Gomez brand value? You have seen this, you know it. Which one is not Gomez brand value? Which one is not? Pure, sustainable, edible, chemical. 28 answers so far. Eight, six, four, 40 answers. Three, two, and let's see who's winning this. Who's winning? Of course it was chemicals. And things have changed. <laughs> Aaron is still pushing at the front with 800 points plus lead. Michael is right there next to him. Mix Fix It UGA is there. Maria Namuye is new on the scene. She's just shown up. And Tazvicha, Tazvichka has come in through as well. She's 3,329 points. I've been kicked off way off. I'm in ninth place, which is heartbreaking. People, be focused. Question number 10. Let's go. Which of the following is not important to build your brand? Which is not important to build your brand, uh, which is not important to build your brand. The Kahoot Pin, Kahoot Pin the seller is 867-3057. 867-3057. Four seconds to go with 49 answers. 52, one, and the pants up from 52 people. Of course, profit over people. Only two people got it wrong. Aaron is, he's, yeah, but he's going, but he's being caught up by Michael. So Aaron is first. Michael is there, Mix Fix It, you guys, you, Uganda is there, Maria Namuye is there, and Taz is very close back. Wow, well done. Okay, I want to see a change in those top five. Let's make it happen. Come on now, let's go. Eight out of 10. Which of the following is Anchor's formerly Africa's core business? What does Anchor do? I want to know if you read up on some stuff. Do they do water purification? Do they do online retail and logistics? SME insurance and provision of video streaming. What does Anchor, formerly known as Africa, which is where Mulaye, who's going to speak next, is from? What do they do? 44 people have answered. 26 got it right. 11 thought it was video streaming. No, it's not. <laughs> have the answers changed? Oh, we lost someone. We lost someone. Okay. Miss Fixit UGA is now number two. Mariana Muya, the girl power. Tazvichka is also number four, and Mpi from Zimbabwe has shown up. This is a good list. Let's go find Aaron. Ladies, destroy this man. Aim for him. Go. Let's do it. Can you focus? Let's get at him. Question number nine. How much investment has Anka recently raised? It is everywhere. If you are looking on the internet, it is absolutely everywhere. How much money has Anka recently raised? If you don't know, I'll be like, you need to, you need to know. Anka raised, this is Mulae over there. How much did he raise? How much did he raise? 
And Violet is back, people. We're going to be talking to her in a bit. How much did he raise? Uh huh. Oh, we missed it. No, no, no. Go back, go back, go back. Oh, no, we missed it. Did we miss number nine? What is the answer for number nine? Take us back. Let's see what that was. Oh, he's trying to figure out how to do it. Okay, as we let them figure out how to do it, no, we have to go back. Oh, please tell us how to do it. Michael, take us back, take us back. I'm not sure how. I also don't know how. No, did we miss it? <gasps> did we? <laughs> 6.2 million. <laughs> 6.2 million is how much it raised. If you clicked on that, I'm going to let Michael figure out how that answer came up. 6.2 million. I want us to know who the top 10 are. So I really want us to know who the top 10 are because you're going to be getting uh, some prizes, some value from that. And on the podium, here we go. Okay. Uh, the connection was lost. It's reconnecting. Give it a moment. It's reconnecting. And Aaron was beaten. Aaron was beaten. Who was number one? Let's see. My <laughs> Maria, well done. You are killing it right now. I love it. Maria Namuya is number one with 5,977. Michael from Kenya is number two with 5,813. And the runaway leader who was removed from the top in the last question, Aaron K, is number three with 5,657. Well done, Maria. I am just super, super impressive. Super cool. Aaron K is from Uganda. Uh, Maria, I believe, Maria, where are you from? Maria is from, Maria Namuni, where is Maria? Tell us where you're from. So we know who won this. We know Michael is from Kenya. I'm not sure where Maria is from, but we'd love to know where you're from. We're going to be giving you prizes towards the end of the conversation. Well done, just so nice. Ours number five. That's not bad. I can't, I can't hit it on number five. That was amazing. And um, someone else is here that we should be congratulating. Do, do I see you back? Violet. Yes, you I'm back. You disappeared. This is Ghana Internet. I had something for I'm you. Can you I, Ghana can Internet. <laughs> Ghana Internet. Can I, this is what I was sharing for you from all of us. Well done. Oh my gosh, man. You are such, I mean, you are fantastic. Like I had my notebook, my pens. Like you are like a whole university in a single human being. <laughs> that was amazing. That that was that was insane. Like I want us to jump into a couple of questions if that's okay. Shall we do that real quick? Do you want me to wrap up, or you just want us to? We should, or we should just go straight to questions. Let's go straight to. I know everyone's gonna be asking for your for your deck. I'm gonna ask you to kindly share that with me. And, okay. And then I'm gonna invite you into a podcast where we're gonna talk about all of these things you've been talking about. But then. Let's let's just jump into the question so that we can also give Mulay a little time to have sure, sure, a chat. Sure. About. But but I I don't even know where to start. The first question for me is is how have you not given up? Like what's the motivation? Like I have spent twelve years in entrepreneurship. Right, the first business I started was the Nylab Kenyans Kenya's uh, first ICT incubator. Raised five and a half million dollars. Sounds like a good plan. But after we did that, about six seven months later, I quit. I couldn't do oh, it. Wow. I, was, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. The expectation was too high. I had to spend no time in my family. My body was mm -hmm. crazy. How, how are you doing that? How are you keeping, how do you keep yourself motivated? Um, I, think, I think it's what I was saying to you before about it has to not be about you. If it's just about you and there's no bigger picture, it's harder to give, it's easier to give up. Also, I, when, when, I, when I'm doing Skin Gourmet, I, it's all in, right? So you do the best that you can but the whole picture is that it's passion as well, because I'm doing it for also not just myself, but my country. And that's a big responsibility for me as a human being. So when you look at it as a responsibility, then it's okay. You always get up, even if you fall, because it's not just about you falling. You falling means other people are falling with you. So you just got to try it that much harder. And you, have, you also have to not be afraid to lose. So yes, it didn't work this time. So you go back, you reflect you retune and then you come back again with a different strategy. Well, that's mm -hmm. how I do it anyway. And okay, so we're gonna get into the, the summary illustration because we have B on the side there, just summarizing the things you're saying. But before we get into that, the one main question that everyone is asking is, mm -hmm. how, how are you 
So yes, there's the challenges you've talked about, the African trust issue with payments and then attracting real talent. Yeah. How are you dealing with that payment platform challenge? Because currently uh, right yeah, now, yeah. I'm on paper waiting for like $2,000 that they haven't sent to me and I have to wait for 21 <laughs> days. Like someone yeah. sending money on hold on my PayPal account and I've uh -huh. gone in touch with them. I'm like, I do this all the time, but they're like, no, we uh -huh. have to wait for 21 days. How are you getting around that? And then how are you finding a team to help you in those other countries? And building uh -huh. that so, trust network. How are you doing that? Okay, that goes back to partnerships, right? So, but you definitely, like, when it comes to payments, um, payment platforms, you definitely need PayPal. You need PayPal. And there's another particular app that's also very good for us Africans. It's called Wise. It's called TransferWise mm -hmm. Before, which is basically an online banking app that allows you to transact PayPal and then to send money out, even though you're in Africa. But the only right. way you can get PayPal is, is again, partnerships. You, you have to have a partner that trusts you enough that they would actually open a PayPal for you to run. And the only way you can get that is again, with trust, loyalty, and the fact that they can see that you're investing in them. So you have to right. build those relationships so that they can guarantee that you are a good person and that the money you're getting is not anything that's fraud. And I think eventually PayPal will come around, but the most important thing is again, it's your relationships. So once you have somebody, whether it's outside, whether it's your distributor, whether it's your business partner who open these accounts for you, then it's very easy for you to transact. But there's no way that anyone will do that if they don't trust you. Wow. I mean, you're you're just such a, yeah, Fino. Like, it's so good to be able to have this conversation with you. Just see what you're doing. There's a lot more women in this uh, meetup than there are men, which is something I didn't expect to see. Uh, oh, wow. Making my assumption looking at the names, right? So that's really amazing. And, and I just want to know, with, with the support of our illustrator, B, if we can actually add his screen, what are the, th you've, you've put out so many heavy hitting points. If you were to summarize the, the things that stood out to you that we should remember, what's, what's the takeaway that uh, our illustrator should put, put out to us to be able to see it? I'm just going to put ask uh, um, Johan to put that screen, the illustrator screen on, on full blast so we can all be able to see it. But I'd love to know what are the things that stand out that we should remember. OK. Look at that. Wow. That's you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Violet, those are so, your points. Just so you know, that's that's your power. That's what you've got. Okay, so in terms of just a summary, I'll just say number one, you have to define your aim. Number two, remember that people are not stupid. You have to develop a competent team. You need strategic partnerships. You have to have a formidable mindset. Innovation is the difference. Let your vibe attract your tribe. Change is the only constant. Focus on excellence and mind your own business. And of course, never, ever, ever give up. That's pretty much it. <laughs> can, can, I just, can I just ask you to say those things again slowly? <laughs> just <laughs> okay, one, sure. I know, I'm so sorry. Just one more time. Just go through. No, 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 like problem. no problem. No problem. No, no problem. Slowly, so that our French speaking <laughs> Africans can be able to get a good translation. Let's just do okay. that one more time. Okay. All right. So the first thing is, you have to define your aim. It is important that you define your aim. The All second right, one is you have to remember people are not stupid. So don't try to pull the wool over their eyes. Develop a competent team that will help support you. Strategic partnerships are key. Strategic partnerships are key. You have to have a formidable mindset. Innovation is the difference. And you have to let your vibe attract your tribe. Change is the only constant. Mind your own business. And you have to remember <laughs> to never, <laughs> never, ever, ever give up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the queen right here. You have just, you have killed it in, in so many ways. I don't even know what to say. So I'm going to give you back your, your standing ovation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for it. For you, you definitely My absolute pleasure. that position at the top 10 ABH group. I'm just, I'm so impressed, so proud of you. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, Violet from the most wonderful skin gourmet that I want to eat in my life. I need to have one of those. Thank you so I much. I will send you some, Tony. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Thank gonna you guys so much. That. Oh my gosh. Awesome, guys. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to the next part of the of the session. I don't know if your brain has chilled, but then we're going to bring you another powerhouse uh, and, and Mulae is going to be that powerhouse right now. 
Um, I know that we are a little bit behind time. I'm going to make sure we try and schedule this and move a little bit quickly. But um, now that we're done with that, I'm going to ask Michael, uh, sorry, to Johan, to play the video. Um, and so that once the video is played, we can quickly get into a conversation with Mulaye. Um, Johan, this is wrong. Welcome to the Jack Mars Foundation, Africa's Business Hero Show. Last century, the bigger the better. This century, business, the smaller the better. Sometimes as an entrepreneur, you can see what nobody else can see. And sometimes what you want to do doesn't exist, but you can see it enough to pursue it and fight for it. This is a great business, but this business is about marketing. You've got to understand who is your customer. I want any people that are in Africa or anywhere else in the world to believe that they can make money thanks to African culture. That's the mission we have. Make a case that this problem is worth solving and that these women that are dying are worth saving and that we have the best system to do it. And I live for the day that every African child can access water in their homes. We are a core hub of high-tech advanced research equipment operating online and on demand. Small is nothing wrong. Make it very simple. Our goal is to go after 10 million farmers in Africa and we're going to get Africa to feed ourselves and the world. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Each one of you give me one advice that I will mark it by heart and I will remember it for 10 years. The road of entrepreneurship is it's going to be tough, but what you shouldn't forget is you take care of your family. I think I have more confidence in Africa, more confidence in the young people and entrepreneurs, and we will continue to do it. Oh my gosh, wow. Mulae, you, you got to be in that group and have that conversation, man. This is, this is, this is, first of all, how does it feel to be back? Ladies and gentlemen, Mulae is with us right now. I'm so proud to have you, bro. You're doing well? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, everyone. Hi, hi. And uh, thank you for having me. And yes, you're right. We are very, very lucky uh, to be uh, the ones, the first ones that got that. And probably the only ones I hope will come back one day. Oh man, and, and how was, I know you were a bit busy this last week, you've just come from a special occasion. Are you doing well? Congratulations yeah. on, your, on your special Thank occasion. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you may or may not want to share it with everyone, feel free to do it. But I wanted us to have a bit of a conversation about, about what you've been sure. doing at Bank and, and just your entrepreneurship journey. Uh, for yeah. those of you who may or may not know, Mule is an, he's such a good writer. I have had the pleasure of reading some of his stuff on, on Medium. So just go and look for him and you, you'll find him. But you, you've just... As a, as a co-founder of Africa, which changed to Anchor, Anchor yeah. how are you doing as a, let's just, let's, you know, post COVID, let's just talk. How are you, man? Yeah. How is it going? <laughs> it's going great. Uh, you know, um, I'm at uh, the exciting part where uh, we've managed to prove that um, there is more needs than just the marketplace to help uh, sellers and merchants grow all over the world. Uh, this discussion has been the proof I've seen what Violet explained, I've seen your question on PayPal, just so you know, uh, you can yeah. use Anchor also for that. You can create payment links that you can send to anyone on WhatsApp or Instagram, and they can pay you and we won't hold your money because we know how African works. So that's the first thing that I can tell you already, just listening to you. And I've seen that people also ask a lot of questions about how to transact globally, and that's what we do. So I'm very happy now that uh, actually we changed from Africrea to Anchor to do that, to do more than just, because we had one platform, that solved mm -hmm. all of these trust payment problem, but we saw yeah. our sellers and other sellers in Africa that had problems with payment shipping outside of the platform. So we decided right. to offer our solutions to everyone anywhere in Africa that wants to ship and export globally. So that was the idea. So now that we are lucky enough to have been funded to do so, and uh, I'm now focused on recruiting the team. So just like mm -hmm. Violet Sam, it's all about the system now. And we're really trying to build the system to make sure that this is uh, going to last longer than our lifetimes. You know, I like that. So it's everyone else. It's anka.africa, A-N-K-A.africa. I'm already on the website right now. Is, is yeah. that the reason why you changed the brand from Africa to Anka? Was yeah. that the main exactly. reason behind that? 
the main reason was that is because we started to offer now we can help you sell on whatsapp we can help you sell on instagram we can help you get money from people outside uh africa and bring it back and withdraw the money in mobile money if you want to use mpesa right. to get your money yeah, yeah. if you yeah. want to use orange money wave you can use any local payment method to get your money from outside that's something that is larger than just the marketplace africa so we had it on africa but people yeah. did it everywhere else. That's why we really opened it up. And now Africa is just one part of Enka. We do much more services because we help people sell everything everywhere from Africa to the world. And then I, I know that a lot of the money that we have has come from abroad. Yeah. Like a lot of money comes from the States. It comes from Europe. Have you, yeah. I have two questions. The first question I have yeah. for you is, have you, have you found local investors? Because by the time you're getting to 6 million plus, you're, in, you're talking yeah. institutional VC. Where, yeah. where did you get your first six hundred dollars? Where did you get your sixty dollars? You know, where did that yeah. start? Because for that a lot is, of us, that's a very good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a lot of us, that, that's where that's a lot a of the people who are in this, in this meeting are, yeah. are at. You know, it's, that's a very good point. Uh, we had several different levels of investors. First, I was the first one, so I might say the first with my co-founder, the first fifty thousand was by basically our savings that we put over time. Uh, because we, we we worked before that and we are lucky to have saved some money and we invested that in the company. But of course, that, that, that gets you only so far. The funny yeah. thing is our first investor historically was one of our seller. So one of our oh. customer that uh -huh. actually, yes. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> she actually okay. loved what we do and she wanted, yeah, she wanted to do the same thing before we arrived, but she never succeeded because she had problems with the tech, etc. So she mm -hmm. saw the value of what we were doing and she actually, every time we talked to her, she was like, oh, if one day you need money, I will invest. And it was a joke. Eventually, the oh, joke became that. true because one day we actually yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> yeah, when you went back to her, so did, you go, did you go like, you're asking for an investment which has become part of the investment team? Or was it a loan? Exactly. And how much was it, if you don't mind me asking? No, no problem. Uh, the first investment was 20,000 euros. Uh, mm -hmm. And she was an actual investor, so shareholder in the company with me and my two co-founders. So we were mm -hmm. three, the four, the, the, the four initial shareholders of the company was her and us. Quickly after that, uh, we had mm -hmm. needed more cash. So then it was some friends of mine that actually invested. So that's another thing. Um, initially, there were, of course, of course, very nobody in my, in my family or friends uh, care about mostly <laughs> fashion or tech. So they were yeah. very skeptical about what I was doing. They didn't really yes. understand. But when they saw the result and they started to see the impact, they wanted to help also. So I think we, my friends give us around like 10 to 15,000 euros in addition to that. That got yeah. us to the level where we could actually, after we were a revenue of the platform, survive and we right. grew. And that's the first uh -huh. thing I think uh, that most people must know. Uh, to raise money, you know, the, 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 the first and most important thing is you need to have traction. You need to grow. And that's, yes. I think most, most people, they think that money is going to help them grow. It's not like that. People mm -hmm. give you money because you are growing too fast. It's not yes. when you get money that you will grow. If yeah. you need money to grow, you are not succeeding. That's the reality yeah. that most people don't tell entrepreneurs. It doesn't work like that. You need to grow. And to grow, that means that at the time, uh, to give you an idea, growing means um, we were growing our revenue, I think it was 20% month on month. So basically, we are doubling every six months. Wow, yeah, of course, yeah. That's insane. That is insane. Yeah. No, actually, we are doubling every three months and uh, 10xing every, I think, six or seven months. So it, that's the level of growth that people, if you want to raise, for example, VC, you need to yeah. do at least 100 to 200% year on year. That's the key factor that people honestly need to know. And it's different. Some businesses, for example, if you do something that has not a lot of revenue, it needs to be, for example, three or four times per year. If you do yeah. a lot of revenue with a lot of margin, it can be just 100%. But yeah. you need to grow before hoping to get investment, even from your yeah. friends, to be honest, even from your family, even, even your sellers, even your, your customers. It's because it was working that she mm -hmm. came to us. So that's the first thing, honestly. That's very key. It's because it was working that they yeah. came to you. And so let's talk about, because again, we're, we're talking to people who have businesses, but we're also talking to people who yeah. may want to start or go businesses. Exactly. You, you are a successful business person because that is what we see 
in two seconds. That's the image we see. It's like when you watch a music video and you see, yeah. you know, Wiz Kid over there doing his thing and you're like, oh, his <laughs> life is like this all the time. But you know, it's not. You know that he's in the studio till five in the morning. You know exactly. that he worked Monday to Monday. There's all those things that are hidden. And I really like how you, you went back and talked about Paul Graham's uh, startup curve, where we talk about exactly. how, you know, things look good. The and then exactly. And then exactly. I mean, all of you need to go and look for Paul Graham's, uh, uh, the, 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 the way he, he, it's called the startup curve, the way he pre presents the startup yeah. journey. What are the things that you've gone through that people don't know? Oh, there is a lot. Uh, there is, of course. Give, give, uh, give me like two things, two, two big sacrifices you've made that five years ago, if I told you you're going to have to make this sacrifice, you didn't you didn't think it possible just just give uh, like, talk yeah. about the good things too much let's talk you about know, the hard things. yeah the hard things for me was the hardest thing was uh, ever was uh, uh first with my co-founders getting rid of my co-founders that was actually my friends that were people that i knew for years and since childhood that i had to take out out of the company and force out of the company with kick screams and even to this day they still don't talk to me anymore oh, so man. that is the hardest thing i ever had to do yeah. That is the hardest thing I ever had to do, and I don't think I will ever have anything comparable to that in uh, in doing a business, honestly. But ultimately, business is all about the team because that's yeah. the thing that even Violet told you guys, and it's true because we had for three years. Uh, I worked with these two guys that were my friends that I knew since I was a child, and uh, we had the same business, the same company, the same name, and it didn't work. We were we were not growing. As wow. soon as I kicked them out. And I started working full time with my other co-founder and we got another co-founder that was a technical one that joined. We grew right. 10 times in a year. Same company. When we spent same two company. years doing the same thing. Same company, same clients, same business, everything same. Same thing. So just to give you a sense of how important who you are with is. And that's my number one lesson as an entrepreneur is no matter how good you are, your company is only going to be as good as the people you work with. There is no truth. going around. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the truth. And, because, and what what has it what has it done? You know, we all as Africans have a mindset. We we think yeah. ourselves a certain kind of way, especially because we are intimidated by our American and European yeah. counterparts. When they come into our countries, they they come mm -hmm. and they raise grants in I mean raise VC in two years or a year, yeah. raise two five ten million dollars. Yeah. And we always yeah. feel smaller than them. We feel like there's yeah. something they do that we don't do. And, and yeah. that imposter syndrome is actually what I'm talking about. Has yeah, really yeah. filled a lot of, of, of people. Yeah, for how, sure. did you, how, did you, how did you deal with that? How did, you, how did you manage it? Honestly, for me, the answer is research. You know, even uh, I put the, the link of my article there in Medium because I think the thing that mm. these Americans have and that maybe we didn't have is they shared more information. And, you know, mm. even San Francisco, Silicon Valley, the real value that is there is that you get access to people that did it before you easily. They can tell you what mm. happened. And I think the thing that we lacked, because Africa is first huge, it's 50, 54 countries, and it's difficult to just relate to anyone else. And unfortunately, a lot of the people that succeeded didn't have the time, or of course, I know the energy to share all yeah. of that. So I believe mm. when you feel like you're not good enough, Look at the stories, the backstories of people that you think are great. And you will always see that at some point they were not also good enough and they learned. And yeah. it goes as well from uh, Rockefeller in uh, the, 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 the beginning of the century. Or mm -hmm. today, if you look at even Aliko Dankote or anyone, anywhere you look, thanks to the internet now, I think there is plenty of information source. You can always get the, the issue number one, of course, is to make the effort. The second one is to be able to, of course, uh, I have the English because sometimes I'm French speaker. And I know that a yeah, French speaker, for right. example, has the issue of there's not as much content as in English. So you need to also be able to do that. And after that, mm. yes, you need to train, you need to learn, you need to learn what is business, you need to learn how to sell, you need to learn how to build, you need to learn how to serve your customers. And I really believe that that's why uh, webinar is that like the one we did today. And Violet was an amazing example. I wish mm. I'm going to try to beg her to do the same thing for all of my sellers. Because yeah. the more people are able to, to hear and listen to these key things, and I think it's a matter of, of repeating. You need to read it again and again and again to actually be able to apply it. And, and, and how did you, you've, you've mentioned that your team really helped you with a year-on-year -year growth, 100, 200, and over and over and over. 
Yeah. How do you sustain that now? How do you sustain it? Is there a cap? Does it get to a maximum? How do you sustain it? <laughs> yeah. um, that's a good question. Um, the thing is, uh, it, it, it gets slower because of course the volume, you know, to do uh, 10 times on a thousand euros of revenue is not compared to doing 10 times on a million euros of revenue. It's not the same exactly. effort. So not as the, the team grows, you exactly, you won't grow as fast now if you just grow 100% year on year, but it's on millions. So basically it's just the team is allowing you to do more heavy lifting, even if the, the, the speed is not the same. You're just growing in bigger absolute value. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And we are and we are competing with American companies, we're competing with European companies, and, yeah. and we are, now Africa is really visible as the entrepreneurial yeah. future. Here's here's one of my yeah. so there's a lot of questions. If, if anyone has any questions, please just show, show, I know Mullah is very yeah. Interesting, yeah. But if you have questions, just put them <laughs> on the chat and I'll pick them out and, and answer them. And I like that we're having this conversation. If you could talk to uh, your younger self, if you now could talk to your younger self mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, and, and you had a single piece of advice or instruction that yeah. you wanted to give yourself, what would that be? Uh, I think I, I'm going to uh, use also another thing that Violet said, Violet said, I would have said go all in. Because my mm. biggest regret, if I look at my part, at my uh, my lifetime, is these three years that I did with my other co-founders, for, mm. uh, for two out of the three years, we were doing it part-time. We were doing our jobs and at the same time, the company. Right. And honestly, even today, I still feel the effects of these two years on my health. It's still mm. affecting oh. uh, my weight, affecting how I feel because, yeah, because I basically took 20 kilos or 30 kilos in, uh, in six months or a year because I was working working uh, from, I might say, 8 to 8 at my normal job, 8 a.m. to uh -huh. 8 p.m., and then I was doing Africrea from uh, 9 to uh, 2 a.m. In, in, in the morning. So wow. I was doing back-to-back -back, uh, work, and of course, this is not healthy and not sustainable, and destroyed a big yeah. part of my energy that today I wish I had, now that I have the right time frame. And to get the right time frame, the right team, I should have gone full-time, all-in earlier. So I believe it's important to prepare, to have a plan, to save money, to prepare, etc. But do not waste time to go all in, because if you go all in, either you fail and you go back quickly to yeah. something else, or at least you, you learn faster how to succeed. But if you, if, you, uh, uh, if you just do too many things at the same time, yeah, mm. you're not doing anything great. That's my... My number one lesson that I think, and I'm still to this day telling people around me is never try to do too many things. You can have one main thing and uh, some fun and some things you mm -hmm. love to do. But if yeah. you want to succeed in anything, you need to do all in. Hey, man, that's, yeah. that's some heavy stuff, man. That's, that's, that's a big <laughs> game. I, don't, I mean, yeah. because, because especially when it comes to our health, sometimes we sacrifice our health for our businesses, not realizing that our kids need us, our family yeah. needs us, like... We, put, we should put those people who love us first. And then the business, if you're healthy and everything's going well, will come a good second. What's, what's the future? What are you, what are you looking yeah. forward to in the next year, two years? I mean, COVID, you grew what, what, yeah. five times. How, COVID, how was COVID and what does the future look like? Uh, it depends. Uh, yeah, during COVID, yeah, our revenue grew five times in 2020 and 100%, so two times this year. So, yeah, what we look forward to is, uh, yeah, to grow still again, uh, at least two to three times this year, because my goal really is uh, to expose and really get, you know, the same way, like you said, people think about PayPal right away when they want to get payment outside. I want to get yeah. Anchor to this level. We really want to be the top of mind yeah. because we want people to know that there is an African company that actually delivers solution for them. We want to allow people to know also that, for example, you can ship out of Ghana up to 2 kg for less than $15 all, anywhere in the world using DHL, thanks to our partnerships, for example. So there is oh, a lot wow. of solution we implemented. Yeah, there is, there is, there is a lot of solution that exists and that we, we want now to get people to know and to use. We are still working on our end to really get uh, all of it explained and easy to use in an app in a perfect way. But there is already so many so great solutions we implemented that we just want now 
to get uh, as many entrepreneurs as we can to hear about it, use it, and grow their businesses. Because the more, business, the more successful businesses we have in Africa, that's the only way we're going to develop. We are not going to develop just by, uh, I might say, moving faster our money or yeah. uh, having yes. more solutions to lend money. That's not how it's going to, we're going to grow. We're going to grow by selling, creating, and actually uh, performing on the world stage. I'm gonna ask the illustrator B to come on board and just summarize some of the things you've said. I mean, I think you're you're really yeah. the example of what Violet has said, but now after Violet has said it, like you're you're the you're the person that took all the things <laughs> Violet said and has turned them into a real life story. And you have 145 people who are gonna take up what you have right now and and start. I'm on Anchor. I'm gonna figure out how to sort out my. Yeah. Uh, my, my PayPal payments on Anchor. You have a customer in me, there's no doubt. And, and my girlfriend and I have always wanted to have the Ankara material from, from, from Ghana for some outfits, for some weddings we have here in town. So, so I'm going to be shipping exactly. some of those. I'm going to test them out. But I'm very grateful for that. Is there anything you want to say? Just, you know, talk to all the people here, whether it's Abolaji from Nigeria or Al Hassan. What would you say <laughs> as a closing yeah. statement to all these guys and girls? Um, for me, the closing statement would be um, keep learning. You, you, you came here today. You came here today. You took some of your precious time to listen. That's, you did the first good right step in the right direction. The next step is to try to apply that. It's going to require you efforts to maybe change the way you thought, the way you behave, the way you act, but you need to really keep going. You, you are taking the right path. If you're here today that you really want to improve, but listening inspiring is not enough you need to actually act so you need to be patient just like Violet also said uh, you need mm. to have a long-term view of maybe what you want to be in five years ten years but every day do something in that direction every day do something in that direction from what you hear what you know what you learn and I guarantee you that eventually you're going to get to the happiness you deserve because that's honestly all that business is about is actually having an impact actually building a life it's not just about making money I, I love that because the, the questions that are coming from the crowd are how to build an ecosystem that helps us yeah. be able to grow each other. The same way you've been able to meet people that are helping you grow. Now we're in this small group of people here. You've got 145 people who are going to go and look at Anchor and building an ecosystem. How did you, yeah. how, you know, just to close up, how do you, how do you, how do you flower the community around you? How do you build the people around you? How do you build the ecosystem around you? How do we become the next Ali Kodango in, in some way? <laughs> uh, honestly, on my end is, uh, I'm going to say again, doing this type of things. I try mm -hmm. to give back, to be transparent as much as I can and be honest with people. And uh, try it, I also try to be uh, self-conscious, to recognize what I did wrong and uh, to try to help people don't do the same thing. And yeah. invest time in sharing that because, for example, this article you have seen, it took me two days to write it and it's painful to do. But I really believe yeah. that the output is going to be amazing for the people that actually make the effort of reading through it. So it's about, yeah, it's about taking the effort. Uh, I'm not always as uh, engaged and as sharing as I would. There is a lot of things that I would love to do. Uh, there are a lot of other entrepreneurs that I would love to do podcast with. A lot of people yeah. that I want to exchange and share with, I just don't have the bandwidth and the energy to do everything. But I always try mm -hmm. to do at least what I can in sharing. And ultimately, I need to do the things that are worth sharing. Like today, we yeah. are very proud of this fundraising, but it was only thanks to our sellers, our team, and uh, the ecosystem that we could do it. Bro, congratulations again. What you've done on Anka is amazing. Even before I heard of, of you, Oh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, is, is, I, I knew I knew of you before people in Kenya talking about you. Uh, I mean, the fintech space as well. So definitely coming across your products is just nice to have. Uh, it's, it's just it's good to see what yeah. you've done. And, and to you and your team and all that you've done, I've got something for you here. And it goes something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so much this is a I know it's, we struggled to get you in because you were away for, for a holiday that was well deserved and it's yeah. so good to have you here so a big appreciation to you from all of us everyone you Thank can you. find more content he's put the link up over here please go look at his medium post and read about it get on to anchor.africa and see what they're doing test something out the best way to show our partners love is to buy their products to that's how you support someone's business yeah 
if you want your business yeah. to grow, support the people who are, are running some good businesses and you're going to see the love coming back. Thank you so much again, Mulaye. Thank you, Violet. Thank you. You guys have been amazing. So good to have you. Thank you, B, for <laughs> illustrating you. everything yeah. and all the energy you put in. And ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the conclusion of, of our first ABH scale up with the lovely Violet and Mulaye who have taken some time to be with us now. We appreciate mm -hmm. our interpreters who have been in it, Constance and uh, Guy. Thank you so much for all of that. Uh, B, thank you for the illustrations. Uh, a big shout out to all the people who have shown us some great love. But I also want to tell you a couple of things before we go. Uh, first one is this year's ABH competition will, the applications will be open on the 24th of March. I want to see you there applying. It would be very nice to have you there. Please apply. It opens on the 24th of March. You can pre-register on, on the ABH website and we have shared the link with you on the chat group. Uh, pre-register on the website and the link is also in the chat bar. You'll be able to see the link in the chat bar there. Please, come on now. You know what? You miss 100% of all the shots you don't take. Don't tell yourself your business is too small. Don't tell yourself you don't have revenue yet. Don't tell yourself you're struggling. Don't tell yourself I have a part-time job. Don't give yourself an excuse not to swing that, that bat. Swing it. Get on there. Apply. Pre-registration is there. HTTPS, that whole thing. AfricaBusinessHeroes.org forward slash EN for English forward slash register. If you're French speaking, I'm sure there's a French speaking version. If you're Portuguese, there's a Portuguese one in there as well. Uh, the 2021 ABH show will be public. So the, the show for 2021 is going to be public. Uh, we want you to look at social media and stay tuned to CNBC Africa and Star Times to be able to watch it. But we do have a trailer and I would like you to watch the trailer. Do we have the trailer right now? You and me have a trailer. Are we ready to do it? This week on Africa's Business Heroes, our top 10 hit the street. I'm excited. I can already envision this thing working. The biggest challenge today is the presentation. A surprise text pushes some heroes over the edge. Game changer. I feel annoyed. Uh, it threw our plans out of the window. We are exhausted, my friend. <laughs> and finally, a winner is chosen. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first place. Oh man, that was something else. You, I, I was part of the top 20. I can guarantee you the stress in that situation was insane. I remember making my presentation up on, on the deck in the night because my kids were home and we're all working from home. You really need to, it's, it's, you really enjoy watching that. It's coming out on Star Times and DSTV. And I'm sure there will be local channels where you can be able to watch it. So keep, keep a lookout for the social media channels. You'll see it and you'll get to know what's happening. But I'm so grateful to all of you. A big shout out uh, from all the ABH team. Michael is here, Johan is here. Uh, I, there's so, so many people who have put this together. Tahira is here as well. And a big shout appreciation to all of you individually for making the time to come out. I really hope you've learned something. Personal experience. I've started four companies that are mine. Did the Nyla, did Kitab, which is an tech company, did Tribe, which is a uh, fintech company now. And in between, I was, I was building um, uh, tech solutions for, for corporate companies. A lot of the times, the things you need to learn, you will never learn them in a classroom. You will never learn them in, in a formalized setting. You learn them on the streets. You learn them in these kind of setups. You learn them from friends who are running businesses who know things. Your, your best funders are people in the same area as you. A lot of times you may know, if you may remember this, when Steve Jobs was struggling with Apple, he went to Bill Gates and asked Microsoft to invest in Apple so that Apple doesn't fail. And they did. So that's something you really need to pay attention to and remember. In, 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 in those moments, when you're, you feel like you're down and out, your best friends are the people who are doing exactly what you're doing. So trust yourself, know that you've got it good, but it's so good to see all of you. We're sorry that we're nine minutes past our, our finishing time. Put your emails out there, get to meet each other, get to know each other. And I'm super grateful uh, to the ABH crew and all of you for making it. My name is Tony Dongo. It was a fantastic pleasure to host this for you. And I hope you have a good day. Take care, people. It was so good to have you. Have a good evening. Uh, this was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I should play, let me play some, let me see if I can play some jazz music as you put your emails in the chat.